Great. So yeah, I'm going to chat about how at Seldon we're using um, OpenShift S2I to help people deploy machine learning. Um, and I'll go through some of the core concepts. So Seldon Core, we're on GitHub, we're open source, and we're focused on machine learning deployment for Kubernetes. Um, so basically, we want to allow people to train using ML, any ML tools, so TensorFlow, Spark, really any tools you can think of, and including the, the um, wider ecosystem of tools, such as Qflow and um, new things like IBM's um, framework uh, for deep learning. So we don't want to restrict um, data scientists in how they train the models, but once they're trained, we want to be able to um, deploy them, scale them, and uh, manage them on, on top of Kubernetes. To so basically allow people to create um, one-time microservice meshes of ML components that describe their one-time components, so not just models, more complex things. And I'll, I'll give a little example of what that would look like. And then deploy those and expose those automatically with REST and gRPC endpoints so you can tie it into your business apps to manage the whole deployment um, aspect, basically. Um, so yeah, so you've seen this slide, so the various components of a, of a machine learning pipeline. And just to clarify where we fit, we fit there at the end on the um, serving, monitoring, rollout aspect and also optimization. And um, obviously we fit into the Qflow ecosystem as one of the components and we're on Qflow and you can uh, install us as for the um, serving um, functionality on Qflow. Um, so what you need to do to get up and running using Seldon Core, uh, three steps really. We've got Helm and KSonnet um, uh, package managers to deploy uh, Seldon Core onto a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so it's really easy, and that's also part of Qflow, so you can use their, their case on it registry as well. And then there's two steps, really. One is to package up your runtime components, so you want to um, um, do the runtime scoring. And for that, we're using OpenShift S2I a lot um, to allow that e to allow data scientists to easily package up their runtime code into a, a Docker container that exposes the appropriate APIs that we have as part of a microservice mesh. And I'll show you how that's done. And then the second thing is to actually describe those, how those components fit together at runtime, the runtime components. And we have our own custom resource definition that allows you to describe that runtime graph. And then you can just apply it using kube control and other, and other concepts to deploy onto your uh, cluster. Um, so just a quick description of, of, of the sort of complex graphs we're trying to allow people to do. So the simplest thing, you have an API, um, gRPC or REST. Um, going to a model that's going to give you predictions. So you're sending in uh, features, getting out predictions. So we can allow you to de deploy that. But then we want to allow people with no downtime to actually do rolling updates to say, turn it into an A-B test when they've got like a new model that's, that's there to be tested. Or maybe do something more complex, like um, run a multi-arm bandits. So in, um, in live, live fashion, find out which of the models is actually performing best and push traffic to, towards the best model. So we have components in Seldon Core, which provide um, some multi-arm multi bandit functionality, and you can create your own, ex extend those to create your own more advanced multi-arm bandits. And we're working on some more advanced um, multi-arm bandits um, in the coming months as well. So you might have that, but then you might want to separate out your runtime components to have a separate feature transformation in a separate um, Docker container. And you can do that um, um, and add that into the um, um, graph to, uh, to, to handle the feature transformation as a separate component. And then um, you might want to add in other um, components that um, we think would be useful, such as outlier detections or concept drifts, um, so you can get um, understanding of what's happening at runtime with your machine learning deployments as as requests come through. So again, on the on the open source, we have a um, outlier detection module that you can you can use, um, which um, tries to build up a, a distribution of what it's seeing of passing through it as as a request come in. And then it will, it will add a certain piece of metadata to the responses going back out if it thinks that particular request is actually an outlier. You can add those in as well um, and put them into the graph. And then other components also, such as trying to get explanations. So maybe your models are deep learning models, which are hard to explain, and you need to get um, high level explanations of what features were being used for particular requests. You can pass this back to stakeholders as to why certain predictions were being made. And we're working on those as well. And um, so those can be added in. So all these components, they're all so pluggable. So it's not only um, as part of um, our work that you can add those in, you can add those in as components as part of your work as data scientists. And we expect um, as the uh, community grows that some of these components will be uh, provided um, doing various pieces of functionality that can be added into the runtime. So that's the sort of thing we're trying to uh, allow people to do in terms of the runtime part of the machine learning um, deployments. But the first step is obviously to get your code out there into 
um, um, something that could be run inside Seldon. So for that, there's really um, two core cool steps that need to be one, done. You need to dockerize your component. So dockerize the code for the runtime part and expose it so it, it satisfies our um, some microservice um, APIs, uh, REST or gRPC, that's going to be running in, in, inside our um, 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 so graph prediction uh, network. Um, so um, to allow people to do that really easily, uh, we're using technology like Redshift, Red Hat's um, OpenShift source to image. And I'll describe how that uh, makes it easy for, people, for data scientists to just take their code and then package it up very quickly um, so they could be run inside Seldon. Um, so OpenShift source to image. So basically what this allows you to do, you've got your code there on your left. That's the prediction part that a data scientist has written. They can just concentrate on doing the core stuff, getting the predictions out here. They just define a, a predict method in Python. This is for uh, um, some model they've loaded. And then we, we provide the, the package containers um, uh, parts, the, the package components to actually help to wrap that into a Docker container. So source to image, OpenShift source to image provides, allows um, uh, developers to create packages that um, and some builder images that allow you to package up various uh, setups um, with the right dependencies. So we provide a set of different um, builder images for Python and R and Java, and we'll extend it to further um, components in the future that allow you to then use those builder images, choose one of them that fits your use case. In this case, on the code on the left is Python. So you choose one of our builder images, and then you can just use S2I to wrap your code quickly into a um, Docker image so that we can run it inside Seldon. That makes it very easy for the data scientists just to um, concentrate on the um, core um, code part for doing the predictions, and they just choose one of the um, um, builder images. So how does that work in practice? Um, so here's a, a S2I command line at the bottom there. So you use S2I to build on the current directory. You've chosen to use our Python 2 uh, um, uh, package, uh, builder image, and that's the output um, um, Docker image you want to create on the right there. You have your code, which you just concentrate on the core predictions part. Uh, you then you can supply the set of uh, dependencies, in this case, Python requirements or text. So SkyKit Learn and SciPy in this case. And then you just give it give us a few pieces of information, which can be provided either on the command line or in a .s2i environment uh, file, saying, where is my code? In this case, the RS classifier on the left there. So that's where it knows to get the um, code from. Um, what do I want to expose this as? It could be REST or gRPC at present. And what sort of thing is this? So in this case, it's a model. And as I showed previously, there's other components that can fit in. So we have other types of components, not just models. So you have transformers and combiners that can do other, other um, functionality in your um, um, service mesh that you're going to deploy. As for this case, it's a model. So once you've done that, you can just tie it into that uh, command line S2I build. And then it's very easy to tie this into your CI CD to actually, as, as, as you um, update your prediction, runtime prediction code, it can just, you can tie this in and build, build new images and push that out um, to deploy onto Kubernetes your runtime deployments. So, yes, just to um, summarize the steps that, that you need to do to use uh, Seldon. So, one is you can train using anything and then you just package it. And for this, we use S2I. Uh, then you describe your deployment, which I won't go into so much detail, but that's where you des describe your graph that I showed inside a custom resource uh, to describe what you want to be deployed. And then you, you fire that off via the Kubernetes API, um, and you can then monitor it and um, obviously update it um, as you go along. Um, so I just want to quickly show a couple of um, uh, recent projects that we've integrated with, recent examples of um, how you can use uh, this technology. So one is uh, PySpark. And, PMML demo, um, so it's on our um, GitHub repo. Um, so in this one, I won't um, do a live um, demo, but I'll just sh show you quickly, just run through the code. So that you've got code here that runs a PySpark training session to do, in this case, MNIST, and then you export you export the um, final model as um, PMML into a file. Um, and then here we just use S2I um, to wrap a Java um, program to actually run the PMML an evaluator, so you can run that, um, and that's what, what's going to do the runtime predictions. So basically, the in this case, we've got a little piece of code that's a Java code that's using a library J, JPML that interprets um, uh, PML exported models, and then you can uh, uh, use that to actually uh, perform predictions. So in this case, 
the data scientists would just concentrate on writing this little bit of code that um, does the predictions and uh, uses that, that library G, um, JP or MML. And then um, you just use this to I to build it into an image and then deploy it. So it's really easy and there's a, there's a notebook here to try it out. Um, you can test it there on uh, Docker and Minikube to run that. Um, a second one with um, integrated in is um, IBM's Fabric for Deep Learning. So this is a thing IBM have brought out to do to allow you to run different types of deep learning training on Kubernetes. Um, I think they've got PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Cafe at present. Um, and we've integrated um, on their um, uh, code base. You can find us on on a fiddle in in this this, this folder to integrate to allow you to then deploy the final train models on Seldom. And in this case, there's an example um, to, again, do a TensorFlow model using MNIST, train it using a Fiddle. And then you can wrap, wrap the runtime score again using S2I, uh, very easily to quickly wrap that into a component, which we can then deploy onto, um, onto a, a Kubernetes where a Fiddle's running um, to actually do the runtime scoring. So in this case, uh, it's, again, it's Python. There's a lot of code here that's actually doing loading the um, um, loaded model from S3, because that's how um, sort of Fiddle stores the um, the models um, as S3 in S3 buckets or on S3 compatible uh, object store. Um, and then again, the data science just focuses on the prediction part here at the end to actually just do the predictions. And that's the code that we um, wrapped in S2I and deployed. And again. Here's the example graph. Uh, this is the graph, the custom resource where you're defining some of the environment variables needed to load your code, and then you define your graph at the bottom here. So that's what's deployed onto, onto the network, and then you can you can run that. So we're trying to build up a, a whole sort of a set of different examples for different um, use cases with different projects to make it easy for, again for data scientists that want to use different types of um, um, training libraries and uh, different different projects to actually get there the runtime deployments um, pushed out there onto Kubernetes and managed. Um, so yeah, so back to um, the next steps, uh, what we want to do. Um, so um, some of the things we want to do is obviously have some more OpenShift specific examples. That'd be great to have those um, out there. I want to um, use some of the Red Hat CentOS images for the core components. So that's all compatible with OpenShift. And we want to work on that in the, in the, in the coming uh, weeks. And also add Seldom to the OpenShift, OpenShift service catalog. Uh, so we were working with that so they could be e easily used as part of the um, OpenShift community to uh, deploy machine learning models. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation. That sounds like an absolutely awesome um, next set of next steps. Are you already working with the, um, the certified container group at Red Hat? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we are. So, yeah, we've got contact with them and we're um, yeah, starting to look at the um, working on those steps right now. Cool. All right. Well, um, has anyone got any questions for, for Clive at this point? Matt, do you want to add anything, or David? Maybe Nothing other than really that's uh, amazing um, kind of presentation. I'd love to see the way that you're integrating in the community here, uh, kind of picking up the pieces that, that make for um, really fill out a solution for for ML, and the the way you fit into the Kubeflow um, picture is also uh, really well articulated. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks. Agreed. Thank you so much. So uh, yeah, I just have a question, and this is the first time I've heard of the IBM Fiddle project. Has it been around for a while, and I just missed it? Um, um, yeah, I think I think it's been around for for a few months. I think they've probably been working on it silently, and now they've uh, open sourced it. <laughs> okay. Well, then we'll have to look for some details on that and, and get yeah, them yeah. talk a yeah. little bit more about that. I, that was the first one I, I had heard of that, so that's that's great, great to hear. Um, so that's what we had for today for topics. Mm -hmm.